Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Amy Goodman will return tomorrow. The United States bombed 85 targets in Syria and Iraq on Friday in retaliation for a recent drone strike by Iran-backed militants on a base in Jordan that killed three U.S. troops. Iran's foreign ministry spokesperson denounced the U.S. airstrikes as, quote, another adventurous and strategic mistake by the United States that will result only in increased tension and instability. At least 40 people reportedly died in Friday's attacks. On Sunday, a drone struck a base housing U.S. troops in eastern Syria. Six Kurdish fighters allied with the U.S. died in the attack. President Biden's National Security Council coordinator, Admiral John Kirby, appeared on Fox News Sunday. I'm certainly not going to talk about potential future military operations. What I would say, and this is a really important point, is what you saw on Friday night was just the first round. There will be additional response actions taken by the administration uh, against the IRGC and these groups that they're backing. The U.S. also bombed Yemen again on Saturday and Sunday, targeting sites controlled by Houthi forces, who vowed to keep targeting ships linked to Israel and the United States until Israel halts its assault on Gaza. This comes as U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken returns to the Middle East for meetings in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Qatar and Israel. Israel is continuing to bomb the southern Gaza city of Rafah, where hundreds of thousands of displaced Palestinians had taken shelter seeking safety. On Saturday, an Israeli strike on a home in Rafah killed at least 14 people, including women and children. At least 30 Palestinians also died in Deir al-Bala, where Israel bombed homes and a mosque. Health officials in Gaza say at least 234 Palestinians have died since Friday, bringing the overall death toll since October 7th to over 27,300. Meanwhile, a Palestinian doctor who was jailed by Israel for 45 days has described being tortured in Israeli custody. Dr. Saeed Abdul Rahman Marouf was jailed after Israeli forces raided Al Ahli Arab Hospital in Gaza City. The torture was very severe in Israeli prisons. I am a doctor. My weight was 87 kilograms. I lost in 45 days more than 25 kilograms of my weight. I lost my balance. I lost focus. I lost all feeling. We were shackled for 45 days, handcuffed for 45 days. However you describe the suffering and insults in prison, you can never know the reality unless you lived through it. In other news from Gaza, Belgium summoned the Israeli ambassador after Israel bombed Belgium's development agency in northern Gaza. The bombing reportedly occurred on Wednesday after Belgium announced it would not pause funding for UNRWA, the UN agency for Palestinian refugees. Protests are continuing across the U.S. against Israel's assault on Gaza. In Louisville, Kentucky, 15 people were arrested Friday after they blocked the entrance to offices of military contractors, Raytheon and BAE Systems. Meanwhile, 19 students at Brown University have entered their fourth day on hunger strike to urge Brown to divest from weapons manufacturers who are arming Israel. A bipartisan group of senators have unveiled a $118 billion package that includes harsh new immigration measures with new military aid for Ukraine, Israel and allies in the Pacific. President Biden has backed the package, describing it as the toughest set of border reforms in decades. The ACLU has warned the bipartisan deal would eviscerate long-standing asylum protections and force the government to summarily expel people from the border without due process. House Speaker Mike Johnson has already said the bipartisan Senate package is, quote, dead on arrival if it makes it to the House. Meanwhile, independent Senator Bernie Sanders has announced plans to introduce an amendment to remove $10.1 billion in military aid for Israel. In a statement, Sanders denounced what he called, quote, Netanyahu's illegal, immoral war against the Palestinian people. In other immigration news, a dozen Republican governors joined with Texas Governor Greg Abbott at the U.S.-Mexico border to show support for Texas's unprecedented standoff with the federal government. Last month, the state of Texas seized a portion of the U.S.-Mexico border and has refused to give Border Patrol agents access to the area. The standoff in Texas comes with the presidential election nine months away. 
On Saturday, President Biden easily won the Democratic primary in South Carolina, the first primary recognized by the DNC. Biden won more than 95 percent of the vote. Marianne Williamson placed second with about 2 percent.